Hello, my name is David Stewart. I'm with Zero Weight State, and I would like to take you through a brief demonstration of how Agile's Product Governance and Compliance module can be applied and implemented to um, help companies struggling with reach standard enforcement and reporting. So let's just log in as a Compliance Manager in Agile. What I'd like to do is take a look at one of the specifications. In this case, we'll take a look at reach, and so I'll define the search to only look for specifications, and I'll bring back all. And you'll notice that we have two in the system. EU Rojas and also REACH compliance. So in this case REACH really is just a um, specification looking at a set of substances and when you apply that against your product record you're trying to figure out by mass um, so you can report this information out how much of a given substance is in a given product. So here is a list of the substances of high concern that are being maintained for this REACH standard and this can be added to at any point in the future. The general information about REACH, you have the description and also the jurisdictions where it's applied. And if you look at the substances, what we've done is we've gone in and added a few extra fields to be able to maintain specifics about REACH, such as the EC number, the authority, and also the reason for inclusion. Let's take a look at a top level assembly. We'll look at this bill of materials tab. I'm going to just change the view to look at the standard view, and we'll expand this down. Now in this case you'll notice that most of these components are compliant already on this particular bill of material. I've got two that are missing information. The first one is a CAD files document type object. And because it's a CAD document or a document type object in the system, it's not going to be considered in the roll-up of the actual compliance. The one that's the problem here is this one right here. It's the LCD display because it is a part. If we look at the compliance tab, you'll notice the compliance tab has the red dot next to it. And it means one of two things, either we're missing information or we're out of compliance on one of the components. If I use Agile's BOM compliance report, this allows me to go in and drill through the entire product structure and find out exactly what's missing and why. Once the system generates the report, what we'll be able to see is where the offending object is. So in this case, you'll notice we've got this manufacturer part that's missing the information that reports up to this LCD display which also reports up to the top level assembly. If I look at the manufacturing component the reason is there's not been any compliance information associated with this. And So what I'd like to do is involve my supplier in this process and have them provide this information. So I'm going to go create a new declaration. In Agile a declaration is a standard form that is routable on a workflow that allows me to collect information and signatures and route this information to my supplier to have them input the required reach data. I'm going to use Agile's type head function to select my arrow distributor because that's the person who's supplying this component to me. And I'm going to let them know that we're looking for this reach data. I'll pick a workflow, in this case we'll just use the standard default declarations workflow, and I'll give my vendor one week to respond. I'll make myself the compliance manager. I'm going to save this information off. Now in Agile because you can supply or you can apply multiple specifications or standards against a given product design, um, in this case you have to provide which one you're looking for. So I'm going to define this as being the reach component or the reach compliance standard that we're looking for. In my manufacturer part, because I started this declaration from the context of that manufacturer part, it was automatically added. I can add additional parts here, so if I have a supplier supplying multiple components, I can have them provide the information all at once. But that's all I need to do as far as the, the uh, compliance manager standpoint. I'm going to route this to the next status, which then lets me send it to Arrow. I'm going to have them provide the input. Once that's routed, you notice it goes to the open supplier status. And what's going to happen on the supplier side, they'll receive an email, and it's going to direct them to log in and provide the information that we're looking for. So you'll notice when the supplier logs in, they've got a different view than the compliance manager. In this case, it's very distilled and it's very specific to their role in the system. They're looking at this declaration. And what they want to do is they want to understand what is being required. So they're looking for reach data, my customer is. Now I want to make sure the specification I'm trying to provide the information for is on here. So I'm looking for reach compliance. So my manufacturer part 
if I had multiple manufacturer parts, I may be required to export this information into an XML format, import into other systems and provide the information, or if I was maintaining an external database, if I format it properly, I can just import it directly into Agile. So in this case, we're just going to put this information in manually. And what I'm going to do is use the fill down feature here just to quickly provide the information. Now, the concentration levels, because we're dealing with reach, we don't need to worry about the concentration levels per component. So I will use the declared PPM simply as a status flag in the system. So in this case, I'm going to provide the actual mass on these substances. And what I want to do once I'm done is hit save. And I want to run a calculated compliance on this particular declaration. And so what this will do is indicate to my customer that I've finished my task and I've provided all the information they're looking for. And then I'm showing a status of compliant. So I want to go to the next status here, provide this information back to my customer. And if I want to notify additional people, I can. Comments. And then I need to provide a password. And this provides traceability in the system as to who provided input into the process and at what time. Now, conversely, on the other side, just like I had with the supplier, Dan Carlisle will receive an email. And Dan's going to log into the system. And just like the compliance, or excuse me, the supplier, he'll have a workflow routing in his inbox for this particular declaration. So Dan will look at the manufacturer parts, make sure that all the information has been supplied by my manufacturer or my supplier resource. Now I just want to go ahead and route this to the workflow. So my next test will be review. And it's going to let me supply some approvers. I'm just going to use myself as the approver so I don't have to log out and log back in. And once it goes to the approval state, I'm just going to provide an approval here. And again, it's going to require a password. I'm going to approve this. Now, you could have it automatically release this, but in this case, we're doing a required manual release. And the reason being is you may want to require additional signatures, which we will skip in this step. Once this information is released into the system, if I go to the manufacturer part again, I can then take a look at the compliance tab. And you'll notice it still shows up as red, and the reason being is it has not been calculated. So I can do this one of two ways. I can calculate from the bottom going up. So in this case, I could just calculate the compliance for this particular component, this manufacturer part, or I could go to my top level assembly and do it going down. So either way would work, and it's going to ripple the information out. So in this case, if I do calculate compliance, it's going to go through all the components in the, uh, the BOM and make sure that everything's compliant and report it back as calculated compliant. And again, if I look at my BOM tab, go to my standard view again, and expand this down, you'll notice now that everything is compliant and I've lost the red dot next to the compliance. So at this point, really what I'm after with Reach is I want to go ahead and provide the information in a report format as to an entire substance roll-up for this bill of material. So under the Actions menu, I've got this ZWS Reach roll-up extension that I can run that we've written. And it'll go off and interrogate the entire bill of material and calculate the information for this bill based on the specification that's been applied. So if I open up this report, it's an Excel spreadsheet, you'll notice that we have several things going on here. One is it reports back with the top level assembly we're looking at, also the components associated and their manufacturer parts. And per the substance being declared or, or recognized, what the mass is per substance per component in a final total roll up at the end. Now the one thing I want to do is, I don't want to have to run this report in the future, so I'm just going to do a save as, save this to my hard drive as an Excel spreadsheet, and that way I can use this anytime in the future for this particular revision of the, uh, the design.